Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Video Test Studio and today I'm going to share with you how to create a shake transition in DaVinci Resolve using adding curve. So we're going to see together how to create that transition from scratch and how to export it so you can reuse it down the line and adapt it to any of your projects. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so in DaVinci Resolve right now, we're on the edit page and here I have two clips in my timeline and I would like to create a transition between the two. To start, we're gonna need to bring a cross dissolve here in between those two clips. So we're gonna go over to effect, video transition, and then here we can just take a cross dissolve and drag it on our clip. Oh, but it doesn't work. Why is that? It's because we don't have some excess. So we need to trim those two clips and then we'll be able to just drag and transition over right there. Another quick way to do that is simply to click in between the two clips. Right now it's highlighted in red and then you can just hit command T on your keyboard. It's gonna prompt up on this window telling you that you don't have the handle that I just mentioned right before. And right here you can just click trim clip and automatically will trim those clips to the exact amount. And now we have our transition apply. Now that's just gonna be our starting point. We're gonna use that to create our transition. So I'm just gonna select it and right click on it and we're gonna convert it into a fusion cross result. So we are able to open that into fusion and as you can see in the inspector there is that little fusion icon that just pop up we can just click that and go over in fusion once in fusion we have all two clips so here that's our first clip and this one is our second clip and there is the cross dissolve transition right there that as you can see is still applied this is not a node this is a group so if we double click on it as you can see it just reveal the node inside it so to make it easier we're simply gonna right click on it and then click ungroup and now we just have access to the node on its own. Now let's go on with creating our transition. So here I don't want the dissolve to be applied on the entire time where the transition is happening. I just want it to happen like right in the middle very quickly. So maybe between uh, the 11 frame and the 13 frame, something like that. But we're not gonna use keyframe because there is a way better way to do it now in DaVinci Resolve using anim curve. So we're gonna use that. And actually that's what is used here by default. If we go over to the modifier, as you can see, we have this anim curve on dissolve background foreground tab instead of being a keyframe here in the tool as you can see it appear like it's animated with keyframe but it's actually an anim curve i'm not going to cover in detail anim curve in this video please let me know in a comment if that's a video that you would like to see in the future but right now as you can see the dissolve is linear from the beginning to the end right there so we're just going to change that and bring it to custom I'm going to select my first point and here in in, I'm going to just do 0 0.49 and then I'm going to select my second point and then here I'm going to select the in at 0 0.5. And right now if we're checking the middle of our clip, as you can see, there is no dissolve transition anymore, just switching from one clip to the other. And that's exactly what we want in that scenario. Now with all dissolve still selected, we're going to hit shift space on our keyboard and we're going to search for a transform node and bring that in. Then here we're going to right click on the size and we're going to go with modify with anim curve, which opened the modifier tab right here, the same way as it did with the dissolved node. So as you can see, it has applied a linear zoom to our composition. And first, when it's starting, it starts at zero. We want to change that, but here I just think the offset and instead of having zero, we're going to go with one, meaning that the value is going to start at one right here and then continue to zoom. Now, I don't want it to zoom across the two clip. I want it to just zoom in the first one and then de-zoom in the second one. To do that, we're just gonna take this mirror box right here and I'm basically gonna zoom until midway through the clip and then unzoom. Now, the next thing that I want to modify is the scale because here, as you can see, it's zooming a bit too much for my taste. So I'm just gonna adjust the scale right here to just make the zoom a bit less pronounced. So in my case, I think I can go with 0.5. But feel free to apply any value you like. You'll be able to adjust that value later on anyway, because we're going to export it. Now we're getting somewhere, but the transition is still very harsh. So we're going to need to adjust the curve. You could do that in two ways. The first one is here going to custom and you could just create uh, any curve you like the same way as you would do in the spline editor. But right now we're going to use an even easiest way with pre-built-in easing. So here you can just select easing and you have a bunch of different options you can choose from. If you don't know what those stand for, you can just check this website that I will link in the description that just gives you an idea of uh, what the curve do so for example here curve is in scene it will just show you here the type of animation that you will get and how the curve will look like again i'll link to that in the description below in our case we're going to go with a very simple scene curve so i'm just going to select scene and then for the out same here we're going to select scene as well 
and that the pushing of the transition is a bit smoother in my opinion. Now we're gonna add our shake, so select your transform again, it's shift space on your keyboard and then search for shake and bring this camera shake with the abbreviation CSHK, not the second one. It will work as well, but uh, I'd rather using this one at the moment. So let's just bring that in. Here we're gonna go to overall strengths and we're gonna right click on it, modify width and here an in curve. Then I'm gonna go over to my modifier and here, as you can see, the shake has been applied, but it's just increasing in strength throughout the video. We don't want that. We want it to increase slowly until the middle of the video, then increase very quickly to just have the transition happening. And then we're just gonna have it decrease uh, until the end. To do that, I'm gonna switch the curve here to custom. And then here we're gonna drop a first keyframe and we're gonna put it at in 0.8. And then we're gonna put the out at 0.2. And then here we're just gonna tick mirror. So it just replicate the in and out. And as you can see right now, we have the shake transition. If we wish to increase the strength of that shake, we can just go over to the scale and then you can just increase the scale to have just a shake that is a bit more pronounced right there. Right now, I'm just gonna double click on it to reset it to one and I'm fine with this. Now we're just gonna make the transition between the two clips a bit smoother by adding some blur. But one thing to know is that if you increase the strength of the shake uh, by a lot right here, the shake will be so strong that it will just push out the video out of the frame. A way to work around that is simply to go over to tools and then here you can switch the edges of your canvas from canva to mirror and it will just help you to have a bit more margin here uh, if the shake is strong you will not be able to see the edges right there now let's just add some blur to merge all two clip properly right there so we're just going to use the directional blur i'm going to select my camera shake it she space on my keyboard search for directional blur take this directional blur not the one above bring that in here we're going to put the blur angle at zero and then we're just gonna right click on the blur strength, go with modify width, and then here we're just gonna go with anime curve, go to the modifier, and then here again, we're gonna adjust our curve. So I'm just gonna switch from linear to custom, and then we're gonna drop a point. We're gonna go with 0 0.8 right here, and then we're gonna bring that down to zero. And then we're gonna just click mirror again. And here, as you can see, the blur isn't apply until we arrive almost midway and then we have the blur just happening and transitioning from one clip to the other if you want to adjust the strength of that blur just go midway right there and then you can just play around with the scale until you get something that you're happy with so in my case i felt like it was a bit too much i'm gonna go with 0.5 instead because i don't want it to be too pronounced now we're almost done, but one last thing that I like to do is on top of that directional blur that just help us blend in the two clips together, I like to add some motion blur to the actual shake. To do that, I'm gonna go over to camera shake and then here go to tools and then settings. And then here, I'm just gonna activate the motion blur. Just be aware that this might be a bit heavy and will uh, make your transition render slower. So here I'm just going to increase the quality to 10 and then I'm going to increase the shutter angle to the maximum as well. And now if we play it, that's pretty much it. We've created our transition. Now, if you wanted to reuse that, there is two ways to do that. The first one, the easiest one, would be to go over to the edit page and then here simply right click on your transition and then go over to create a transition preset. Then you can just rename it to whatever you want. So for example, here, I'm gonna go with custom shake and I'm just gonna click okay. Then you can just search in your video and transition for custom shake. Here, if I just make a copy of my two clip, I can then just drag my transition on the clips and we could just play it as it is, or we could just extend that transition to have it happen on a longer span of time right there. And you have full control over the timing of the transition but you don't have control over the strength of the transition. Right now, if you would like to increase the zoom, if you would like to increase the blur, the shake, etc., you cannot do it. You will have to just go over to the Fusion page and make those adjustments directly uh, right there. Which brings me to the second alternative if you want to have full control over a certain parameter of your transition, which is creating a macro. Now I have a video where I'm going in detail about how to create a macro in DaVinci Resolve. I will link to it in the description below. I go a bit more in depth on how it works and what you can do with it. 
right now the thing that you need to know is that you need to just select all the nodes that compose my transition except the media out and the two media in and then i'm gonna right click on whatever node go to macro then create a macro we're gonna rename it custom shake again and then here we're gonna be able to choose the parameter that we want to be exported so in my case, I know it's only three things, is the strength of the zoom, the strength of the blur, and the strength of the shake. In my case, it will always be located in the anim curve. So here I will have transform, then this one will be the anim curve of the transform, because it's just following up right after it. I can just open that, and then here I can go over to scale, and just tick scale. I'm just going to rename it here, zoom instead. And here we're going to adjust the minimum value to zero. So it just cannot go lower than zero. So right now, as you can see, if I navigate to the transform node and go to the modifier, that's basically this scale right here that we're exporting. So that's the one that has control over the strength of the zoom. If you wish to, you could also export here the curve, the in and the out, so you're able to adjust the type of curve that you're using. If you want to export all that, you will have to just export the curve, the in and out, the out, and here the lockup if you want to use the custom curve. In my case right now, I don't care, so I'm just gonna remove all those, and we're gonna move to the second one, which is the anim curve from the camera shake. So I'm gonna go to camera shake. Right after it, I have the anim curve. I can just open that. Here, same, toggle scale, and we're gonna rename it shake. Same here for the number, I'm gonna set it to zero. So the minimum value is zero and it cannot go lower than this. And then I'm gonna go to the directional blur, the anim curve right below it, and I'm gonna select same scale and rename it blur. And then here, we're just gonna switch again to zero. Now let's just export that. I'm gonna save that to my desktop. Then to install it, I'm simply gonna right click on template, show folder, prompt open the right folder where I need to come and paste my transition. So I'm gonna go to edit, transition, and then just drag my dot setting file to the transition folder. Now we can just relaunch DaVinci Resolve. And now if we open DaVinci again, we can go over to effect and search for our custom shake, it's popping up right there. We can then just bring in in between our two clip. And now we can adjust if we want it to be longer or shorter. And as you can see on top of that, right now in our inspector, we get control over the zoom, the shake and the blur and any other parameter that you would like to export as well. So here, for example, if I were to increase the shake by a lot, like maybe 10 and then zooming in a lot more into the video like that, those changes will be reflected in the transition. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know in the comment what kind of video you would like to see next. Don't forget to like and subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition and templates, but only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack containing a compilation of 20 titles curated from our library. Link in the description below or at videodigitalstudio.com.